And for my next trick, I need a silver spoon. Or really, an old stainless steel one, polished brightly. Anything else might get ruined by this demo because I'm going to put it in the candle flame. Silver plate doesn't respond well to this. What I'm doing is to actually put that in the flame itself so that it gets blackened. And you can see there's a good healthy deposit of black soot building up on that. I want it pretty thick, and you'll see why in a tick. Because my trick is to let it cool down and turn it straight back to a silver spoon again with the aid of a glass of water. I reckon that'll probably do. Let's get rid of the candle so we don't burn ourselves. Put that over there while the spoon's cooling. Bring in a perfectly ordinary tumble of water. Get the spoon here and watch it as it goes under because I think it'll go back to silver. Lo and behold, a silver spoon. I can hear you saying the black's all washed off. Well, it hasn't, because out it comes and it's a black spoon. In again, and it's silver. You notice something else. When it comes out, it's not wet. Almost perfectly dry, the way it went in. And that's a good little trick you can try yourself, but it has some important uh, underlying principles that animals depend upon. Because a lot of animals live in or on water, and they have a trick a bit like the silver spoon. For example, consider ducks. Now ducks spend a lot of time on water and under the water. But they don't get soggy and they don't sink. They float very well. And if you could look at them under the water, you'd see they had the silvery layer as well. And I can show you that, not with a real duck, that's a bit hard to see, but with a duck's feather. Here we are, pick it up, plonk it into the water, and I think you'll see over the surface of the feather, there's the silvery layer, like that. Well, what's really going on with these ducks and spoons and these creatures that have the silvery layer? Really, the silvery layer is air, and it comes about in this sort of way. Let's go back to the spoon, because I can show it with that. When I put that in the candle flame, the candle burnt and deposited on the spoon two things. First of all, wax, which water doesn't like and doesn't stick to, and secondly, carbon particles that ended up being a bit furry. So that's a furry, waxy finish. And when I put it under the water, it repels the water and it traps around the surface of the spoon a little layer of air. And it's the air that reflects, it's the air that gives it the silvery look. And that air layer is most important for ducks and a number of other things we'll look at. Of course, you can destroy it. The water doesn't wet the, uh, the wax or the soot, but if you add detergent, it will do exactly that. I'll put some into here and you'll see. Detergent into there, stir it round, and I think my trick won't work anymore. Let's have a look. In goes the spoon, out it comes, and it's wet and horrible. That air layer is gone. And the same thing had happened with the duck's feather. Put that in there, and the air layer is gone. And you take it out, the duck's feather is wet. That's the problem, of course, with oil spills at sea. If you try and clean them up with detergent, which dissolves the oil, it dissolves the oil on the duck's feathers. And the ducks and the, well, not the ducks at sea, but the seabirds get wet, soggy, drown, and get cold. Well, lots of animals that live in the water have the silver layer. Not just ducks, but insects and, surprisingly, spiders. You've probably seen these little creatures in a pond, if you go fishing in ponds. Little things called back swimmers, and as they swim around, you'll notice that they, too, have the silvery layer. Partly because it helps them be buoyant, it keeps them up because it's afloat, and partly because they're air breathers, and they trap this silvery layer of air around them, and they can breathe from it. And, surprisingly enough, the water spider too. This is the most elegant creature. I've got one sitting on the top here, and with luck you'll be able to see it. Here we go. It's rigged up on some uh, bits of stick there. You see, it's got a slightly velvety covering, and so it can do the silver layer trick. It's a spider that lives around dams and ponds, and can go running over the surface of the water, and literally dive underneath the water, climbing down sticks and stones, and do its hunting underneath. It catches uh, even tadpoles and small fish. Well, I'm going to try and show you that. This won't hurt the spider at all because it is quite capable of living underwater and it does it by the silver layer trick. And I'll show you. It's not a dangerous spider but I don't think you should touch them so I'm going to put a bit of cardboard there, turn the whole thing upside down and let's see what old spider does. There we are. It's underwater, crawling around. And I think you can see there the silver glint on its legs and its body. Perfectly at home and it'll trundle around under there until it needs to come up for air. But it doesn't have to come up for a while because it's got its own aqualung, that silver layer. So there you are, the silver layer that's really quite important, not only in tricks with spoons, but for animals, so that they don't freeze, they don't get soggy, and they can breathe underwater.